Guys, I need your help. I need your networking help and your input. Well guys, I've known for a while that I needed to make a change with my networking. And let me go through what my current setup is and what I'm looking at for my new network setup and what the advantages are and the different providers I'm gonna be looking at. So let's first look at my current setup. So this is my current setup. So I do have a, you know internet going to an Xfinity gateway, which is in bridge mode. And it goes into an all-in-one router, Mikrotik router. Now, it's a very powerful all-in-one routed router, but anytime you have an all-in-one router, so it's Wi-Fi and it does everything, a jack of all trades is usually not gonna do the best for you when you have a complicated setup like mine or an involved setup like mine. So with mine, the, my problems with it are the first off, the Mikrotik has bad Wi-Fi. It's extremely stable and it does everything I needed to do, everything that I've thrown at it, but the Wi-Fi has been very sketchy and they've been going through some changes in their software. So it just really seems like if you're gonna do Wi-Fi with them, you're better off getting a separate uh, access point. If I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna reevaluate the whole thing as it is. The other part of it is it doesn't have a single pane of glass. So in other words, when you're trying to logically look at how your network's set up, this router is not gonna be able to show you what's connected to what. You'll be able to pull, pull up a report and see what's going to where and what VLAN is on what port and that type of thing, but it won't actually show you a, a, a simple logical flow chart of how your network's set up like a TP-Link Omada uh, or a uh, Ubiquiti Unify system would do. And that's what I'm looking for. Um, and one of the reasons for that is because with Mikrotik, I know I need to set up VLANs. I haven't done it. And shame on me, haven't done it, really needs to get done. But the bottom line is when you're dealing not only with Mikrotik by itself, but when you're dealing with multiple uh, vendors, so I'm talking about a Mikrotik interfacing to a ubiquity switch, which actually is a decent combination because I could actually put a, uh, a cloud uh, controller on the Mikrotik on a USB. But again, we're talking about complicating something that doesn't need to be that complicated. And when you get to that point, you're just kind of asking for trouble. And I'm, I'm at that point where I'm just like, nope, this isn't, this isn't the right solution for me. I want to keep it simple where it's all one vendor solution. Um, the other thing about the Mikrotik is it does have limited throughput. Recently upgraded to two gigabit service, but the Mikrotik does have two and a half gig, uh, one two and a half gig WAN ports, but it doesn't have any two and a half gig LAN ports or a you know one even just one that I could then move to. Uh, another switch where I can maybe bring in another Mikrotik switch. Because originally when I was looking at this, I was thinking about going all Mikrotik. But again, while that would be simpler than what I have with the Unify and the Mikrotik combination, it still doesn't give a single pane of glass. So those are the main reasons why I wanted to make the change. Now, if we look at the existing setup, I also have um, more things under an unmanaged switch also where they're sharing bandwidth. So I've got a one gig connection going to an unmanaged switch that currently is co connected up to multiple computers. So I want to get away from that. So let's take a look. Oh, I should actually talk about again, the Wi-Fi is important because the Wi-Fi is also going to my helium, um, uh, my helium devices and one of my helium devices which is the furthest one away from the router isn't doing well and i suspect it's because the wi-fi is weak so again that's a big reason why i need to make this change now somebody had offered me a very great price on the audience the Mikrotik audience and that was very tempting 
But again, I keep going back to this no single pane of glass. Things are overcomplicated. I don't want them to be overcomplicated. So that's the reason why I'm doing this. So let's take a look at the next iteration of what I'm trying to do. So I mentioned those two solutions. There's a few other solutions out there, but I've really narrowed it down to these two solutions. Um, and they both have advantages and disadvantages. And you'll hear where I'm leaning towards going and, and the reasons why. But let's go over the way it looks. So first of all, you have a two and a half gig router. So that router has the ability to, again, move things at a higher level to, um, to another switch. So in other words, like if I was going to go with Ubiquity, I have a two and a half gig. I'd have to, that's one thing is I'd have to go with the, with the Ubiquity Dream, Dream Machine um, Special Edition because that's the only one that has a two and a half gig WAN port coming into it. Um, now it does have a 10 gig SFP plus port, which can negotiate down to lower um, speeds if needed, but I would be able to move that into another switch. But here's one of the disadvantages of going ubiquity is they don't, they just more recently have now started to get two and a half gig switches, but they're of the larger size. So we're talking like 24 port sizes. They don't have like an eight port size like the TP Link Omada does. So, all right. So I've kind of gone over and kind of jumped ahead a little bit. Let me go back and talk about the advantages of going with Ubiquity, the Unify solution. And one of them obviously is I already have uh, an existing 48 port PoE switch. I wouldn't have to go out and buy a new switch for the basement. That would be that would be great. And it would just easily go into the system. And I also have a lot of people in the community and friends that have Ubiquity, so they have a lot of experience with it. So if I had any questions, uh, that would also be beneficial as well. But that's kind of where it ends. So the advantages of the TP-Link Omada system is one thing, and I've done a lot of, of uh, looking around about this, is every review i've seen regarding testing uh, access points is that the tp link omada series of access points has much better coverage than um than the ubiquity does so and by significant margin so that is a big thing that's making me lean towards that now the other part of it is is that it just fits my use case so I will have a, um, a two and a half gig uh, router, and then they also have a two and a half gig switch. It's a $200 switch. So it's at a really great price point, and it's what I need at this point. I could upgrade later. I could remove that and move it to a 10 gig switch if I want to, but for right now, that's exactly what I need. Now, interestingly enough, that the throughput on that is actually lower than the ubiquity, but it has what I need. I have two gig down, 200 up, and this will give 2.3 to 2.4 uh, gigabit uh, throughput. So it has what I need, and again, much more economical. Um, also, smaller devices. I don't have a rack, and I don't need a rack. I have a place to put this. I'd rather have smaller devices than to have a rack that I need to mount somewhere and such. That for at least for right now, that's what I'm looking for. And then the other part of it is obviously Ubiquity has a whole camera lineup and, un, and other devices lined up that you can integrate more directly into the uh, Unify environment. But I don't need that. I have no, at least at this point, I don't have any plans to have cameras around my house. So I don't need that. So that's not an advantage to me. A couple other things is that it's less expensive, much less expensive. So if I'm looking at say, um, going full 10 gig where I can get like nine and a half, uh, gigabytes of throughput, that router is only going to be like, uh, $400. So that's less expensive than the two and a half gig option with ubiquity. So less expensive, and then more options. So if I want to go two gig, like if I wanted to go fully two gig with what exactly I need with an eight port upstairs 
and a 24 port downstairs, I could go fully two gig if I wanted. Now my plan is that this device down here where it says 10 gig, one gig switch, I'm gonna do a, a one gig switch in the basement because I don't need two and a half gig going to the devices I have in the basement. When I, where I want two and a half gig is the things that are in the den. So this in the middle will be the multi gig switch and then I'll have the two and a half gig uh, router. So I'll, and from the two and a half gig router, I'll have either I'll come out two and a half gig to the, the multi gig switch or I can go through an SFP plus connection from the two and a half gig router to the multi gig switch. Uh, I'll kind of decide that later on. I may start with two and a half gig and then move later on to the uh, the 10 gig, but I will definitely start with the 10 gig going from the multi gig switch down to the basement switch just so I don't have to rerun a cable or uh, I just want to have that one start out exactly how it's going to be. Um, the other thing is I don't have to pay for a cloud controller that I would automatically be getting with the Ubiquiti Dream Machine. Uh, I can go ahead and put that on a VM somewhere else and I can have that VM grow. I can have it expand as my network expands. So I like the ability to do that. Now you have the ability to do with that with Ubiquity, but you're already buying that functionality in the Dream Machine already. And if you don't have to buy it, that's fine. Now, I'm lucky enough that there's a community member who is going to <clears throat> provide uh, the OC200 uh, cloud controller. And why that'll be a great advantage is I'll be able to pre-configure everything just right here in the den <clears throat> without being hooked up to the internet. Just I'll configure it as is with that controller. And then once I go to roll it out, I can still leave it on that controller and <clears throat> connect everything up. And once I have everything connected up, I can then take that config file from that OC200 and move it into a VM at that point. So that'll be a huge advantage where I'll be able to grow that VM as needed. Um, and then of course the wireless access point, that's a huge advantage. I'm really looking forward to being able to expand the coverage uh, in the house and getting it back to my old TP link that I used to have. That was one of the advantages of my previous router is that it had great Wi-Fi connection. And in fact, the, the micro tick that I currently have, I compared the signal level of, of what's coming out in the micro ticket. And again, I'm right here in the den, the, the router's right there. So um, the micro tick is like eight DB, nine DB less signal than the Xfinity uh, gateway that's basically doing like a public uh, Wi-Fi connection. Uh, even though it's in bridge mode, it still has the ability to do that evidently. Anyway, point being is, is that the Mikrotik has much lower transmit levels and no matter what I try to do, I can't get the transmit levels to increase. So help me out guys, tell me what you think in the comments. Uh, should I go Ubiquiti? Should I go uh, TP-Link Omada? Uh, as far as reliability goes, everything I've read, they both do a great job. Um, I've actually heard more pros on Omada than I have Ubiquiti. But I mean, it's it's kind of six of one, half dozen of the other. People that review this type of stuff, a lot of them have both of them in their network so that they can become familiar with both of them and but have very positive things to say about both of them. Big thing is, if somebody wants cameras for their house, then obviously the way to go with is ubiquity. For me, that's not that's not a deciding factor. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. And guys, we will see you in the next one. Should be coming out with a video at least once a week. Have a great one, guys.